the gospel we are preaching, it can't change anything. There are many continents and many nations today that are going through terrible persecution. If the only gospel they have access to is this thing we are preaching, they will deny Jesus Christ. You don't know what is happening around Afghanistan. You don't know what is happening around Pakistan. You don't know what is happening around China, around Japan. If it is this thing we are preaching, 10,000 people gather around you and you are teaching them about wealth creation. That's what pastors are preaching. Wealth creation. We even come to organize cryptocurrency conference in church. <laughs> because our goal is how to succeed. If the world were to rest on our gospel, many continents would deny Jesus. Because what we are preaching, the church in Afghanistan doesn't need it. The church in China doesn't need it. The church in Pakistan doesn't need it. We are preaching what we are preaching because persecution have not come. And we have not realized that we are in the last days. If you know you are in the last days, you will teach people a gospel that will make them come to a point where dying for Jesus will be an honor. If you have not taken your congregation there, you have not begun to help them. They will not know it. Wait until war come. Everybody can run from a city. And then all of those your prosperity gospel, they will run from all the assets. And I'm not talking about against it. But if that becomes our major emphasis, then we are children. And what we don't know is that there is an encroachment strategy that is going on. The enemy is coming. He's coming. And the time is short. The age of man is about to end. We don't have so much time on this side anymore. But men are not aware that there is a race of eternity. There is a race of eternal relevance that we are already losing out on because we are pursuing earthly things. Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, all these things that the pagans seek will be added to you. But we are pursuing the addition because we are not aware of the times that we are in. Let me show you a scripture that Jesus himself spoke. Matthew chapter 24 from verse 9. Before I enter into what I'm entering, so you know the, the reason why we are not ready for the last days. Because what they are teaching us, we will not survive these days that Jesus spoke about. He said, they shall deliver you up to be, number one, afflicted. Did you hear any gospel in the body of Christ now that makes it look as if you need to build capacity for affliction? No. Because we don't know we are in the last day. There are five things you must survive in the last day. The first is what? Affliction. He said they will deliver you to be afflicted. This affliction is called persecution. And I told us yesterday the cross that Jesus said we should carry is not sin and sickness. It's persecution. The body of Christ will be persecuted. And so the church we are raising now is a warrior church. So that everybody, like in the days of the first apostles, you can pick a deacon from church and he will enter a city and conquer the whole city. And even if he has to die there, it's an honor. I read the story of the Moravian brothers. They were so passionate about God and they needed to enter the nation of France. But there was no way they would be giving allowance to France. So the only way they could enter France was to sell themselves as slaves. And when they sold themselves as slaves, they gave the money for charity. And they were carried to France as slaves. Because that was the only way they could smuggle the gospel to the nation of France. But you go to church every day and all you are taught is how to succeed. How can you stake your name for the kingdom? That's why we remain infantile. What Jesus said is, you will be delivered to be afflicted. Those are witnesses. It's not everybody. There are some that will run for their life. But there are many that will say, I will stand here to the end. If God sent me to, to Ghana, I will be here even if everybody leaves Ghana. I heard Bishop Boedeko said something. He said, if everybody is running from Nigeria, I will be the last. I will stand here till I die. Because we don't pursue things. We pursue the kingdom. We pursue Christ and his government. You will be delivered to be afflicted. Number two, he said you shall be killed. That's the second thing we endure in the last day. This is why the gospel of the last day is the cross of Jesus Christ. And the cross is not a wound. The cross is a testimony of total surrender. The cross is a testimony of total submission to the government of Jesus Christ. Even when it is at the expense of everything you stand for, including your life. He said you will be delivered to be killed. Unless you don't want to be a witness. 
if you just want to be an ordinary Christian, that's good. Continue with what you are doing. But if you want to be a witness that God can trust and commit kingdom to you, you must pass these five criteria. He said, you will be delivered to be killed. And he went further. He said, you shall be hated by many nations for my sake. And then he went to number three. He said, many shall be offended because there shall be betrayer of one another. So the third thing you will endure is betrayer. The people you labor with over time, they will be the one to send you off. You will discover that you can't find men of integrity anymore because their bellies have become their gods. So the man that you thought you invested and labored with, a day will come, he will look at you, he will sell you for 30 pieces of silver. He say you will be betrayed. But one thing you must learn how to endure and survive is offense. Refuse offense from entering your heart because these are requirements of the last day. So first of all, you must survive affliction. You must survive death. You must survive offense and betrayal. And then he went to number four. He said there will be iniquity. He said because iniquity will abound, the love of many will wax cold. This is why today immorality is a natural part of us. So now they have what they, they have different kinds of counseling sessions where pastor try to manage things because what is happening in church if he says it the church can't continue instead of us ministers to now be trouble and teach the people the way of righteousness and to teach them the terror of god we come to church every day we are interested in money so we want to take money from them and so long as the person can bring money it doesn't matter if he's a thief it doesn't matter if he's a fornicator the goal is to take the money and when we take the money we don't care about their soul but what we don't know is that god will ask us that question how can you be pastoring 10,000 people and the city doesn't feel your impact and every time you come you are happy you are snapping overflow that 10,000 people came to church you are talking to 10,000 people and the territory is still in darkness it means you are failing in your office because Jesus spoke to 500 people and the Bible said this be the men that turn their walls upside down how come you are talking to 10,000 people and that city have not felt the impact of revival because what you are feeding them with is milk you have not given them strong meat if you talk to 10,000 people and you tell them the right thing that city will be on fire for Jesus Christ because everyone will become a witness and the nation will be turned upside down for God but we have a generation where people brag in the fact that church is large but they are not moved when the territory is in darkness God forbid that you have the influence over 10,000 people and the territory is in darkness God will ask you what you have been telling them because if you tell them the gospel of the kingdom they will change that territory the love of many will wax cold because iniquity will abound but you see most of us we are already cold i told you yesterday that's why the temperature of our individual prayer is weak now when we come to pray we need to play chant at the background to pray warriors we need a chant to pray what if god sends you to a wilderness what will you do you don't know that in your spirit is a song of songs there is a chant that is in your spirit because you are connected to the river of eternity. You are waiting for... Because iniquity will abound. The love of many shall wax go. And Jesus went further and said, But they that endure to the end. So the last battle is the battle of endurance. The greatest warfare in the spirit is the battle of attrition the battle of attrition is not the devil doesn't come to win you he comes to weary you out so he's not hitting you to go down he hits on you on one spot until you give up the goal is to weaken your conviction so that when you are weak no matter what happens you can be restored it's called the battle of attrition is to weary you out but jesus said we must fight that battle and endure to the end so there are five things that every believer in the last day must survive the first is affliction the second is death the third is offense and betrayal the fourth is iniquity and the fifth is attrition that the warfare of the devil can wear you out and the only way you can get to that point where you have that level of stamina is when your pursuit of God is not for the things that he gives your pursuit of God becomes God himself everything God gives you makes you a trust fund if money comes to your hand you are a trust if property comes to your hand you are a trust what it means is that you are God's bank on the earth so when God wants to reach people he saves money with you you cannot bank on that thing because that thing just makes you a channel for God 
So when God wants to read the poor, he said, where is that 2,000 Ghana CD I gave you? Take it to the orphanage. Yes, Lord. If you are like that, you won't come to God for money. Because you know any money God gives you is not for yourself. You are just a trust. Hope you know that the money in UNICEF does not belong to UNICEF. UNICEF is a trust. So when they want to come to Africa, they go and fetch from that account. How can you now be serving God for money when all the money God gives you is a trust? There's a portion of it we enjoy, but your goal is not enjoyment. They say, give, tell them that are rich in this world not to be high-minded, not trust in uncertain riches, but to trust in the living God that give it to every man liberally that he may enjoy. I'm not preaching to you the gospel of suffering, but I'm telling you that there is a state of conviction that we attain that we know our pursuit of God is not for the things God gives, it's for God himself. And if we come to the point where we have to give up everything, we will do it gladly. I heard the story of the patriarchs of old that brought the gospel of Christ to Africa. Most of them were buried on these mountains, you see. But they never stopped coming. They killed them, the more they came. They killed them, they came. The Bible you are reading today, many persons were burnt on the stake for the copy of the Bible to make it to another day. Because sometimes in a, in a city, only one man will have the copy of the Bible and his goal is to run with it until he hands it over to another witness and when he hands it over most times they catch them and ask them where is that Bible they will never speak and they will burn them alive but they will not cry their joy is that the Bible have made it to another person's hand and today you hold that Bible you don't know that that Bible came to you swimming in the river of the blood of Matthias And we come to church we don't know that church is an equipping ground we don't know that church is a ground where we wear our spiritual armory we think church is just a place where we come for social gathering we are not taught because we don't know that it's a warrior church God is reason if it is these Christians today that were the first Christians Christianity would have finished from this world because the believers I see today they will not die because of the Bible they will say, okay, don't worry, let the Bible be burnt. At least, let me keep my family. Because they don't understand divine posterity. They don't understand the reward system of eternity. I read about men that some of them were tied and they watched their family killed. Just for them to either change their confession or to reveal where the Bible is so that they will destroy it. But they kept quiet. They killed their wives, killed their children. That's why you and I could call the name of Jesus today. Do you think the next generation have hope if this is the kind of Christianity we do? Because we don't know what God is doing. Ah, hey. Hey, ah, 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 ah